and he's just in the lounge. It's great to see you. Come on in. Hi, welcome to our home. It's good to have you all here with us uh, this morning. Welcome again from me to, to our house. Um, it's amazing, we're doing, with this technology, we can fit the whole of Hope Church in our lounge. Uh, so you're welcome. Um, it is, it is, these are diff different times, aren't they? We're not all meeting in one room together, but there's something great still about being able to worship God together. Uh, we're gonna do some preaching and teaching together right now and uh, yeah, so I hope you feel comfortable in our home uh, it's just really good to have you here uh, I'm getting quite warm standing by the fire because although it looks all homely it's definitely getting my my bottom quite hot <laughs> so today I'm gonna we were scheduled today to talk about uh, the kingdom in the church and uh, it's, uh, it, our series is the activity of the kingdom uh, and so we wanted to talk about the kingdom in the church and, and the more I tried to prepare this this week, the more I became aware that I couldn't get past the, the, the massive situation that we're all facing, the global situation, which is the coronavirus. And uh, of course, that affects us all and it affects the church. And I, I wanted to talk about really the, the a perspective on that from the point of view of what is God doing? Where is the kingdom of God in all this? Uh, and actually how could we respond what's our posture what's our faith uh how can we stay at, at peace in this in this very strange and challenging season and distressing season for many many people so that that's kind of our, our direction of travel this morning um as we get into some scripture together and and so i just want to i've got got some notes here probably just a bit off screen for you uh, if i move them over you might see them there we go uh and I just think it's, um, yeah, it's just such a challenging time that I was asking the Father, what, really, what's your response to this? And uh, I, it was a strange encounter with him that he was saying to me, I got the feeling that he, he, he wasn't impressed with that question, slightly offended, actually, that I was asking how he would be responding or how he was responding to this situation. Uh, and what I felt him say is, well, actually, this situation is a response to what he has already been doing in the earth. Um, and that, that's something to think about. And that's something that made me think. And that's something that has, has informed my, my preparation and my study, study this week. So the first place to go, really, is, to, is just to think about the kingdom of God uh, and, and what that is and, and how that works out. Uh, the... <laughs> The, uh, again, it's so good to see so many of you in the room. <laughs> uh, the kingdom of God is, it, it talks about, we're, we're encouraged to seek first the kingdom. We're, we're told to pray. We're told to pray that for the kingdom to come. So the well-known prayer that Jesus taught us, our father, you are, you are in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come on the earth as it is in heaven and that whole that whole sense that, that that whole prayer describes something of the nature of the kingdom it's obviously it's the father's kingdom there's something fatherly about this it's a kingdom and the kingdom is something governmental about it not governing a piece of land but but it's in terms of, of god's authority and god's god's will being done so it says your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven so you could say it's it's god's will done in his way it's not just his will but it's as in heaven with the feel with the environment of heaven so that tells us something about the kingdom the bible also describes the kingdom as something about that the kingdom is a kingdom of power and not of words it's not lots of dialogue and discussion it's actually a presence of god it's 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 a changing dynamic power and and also in, in romans it tells us that that the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So those things give you something uh, of the nature and quality of the kingdom. The kingdom is, is the Father's domain. It's his rule. It's it's the un undisputed uh, government of God. Uh, but it, it, the quality of that kingdom is it's powerful. It's full of peace. It's full of joy. And it's full of righteousness. And all those things live together. They're not little boxes. The kingdom is righteousness, peace and joy. They all happen together and we're encouraged to seek that kingdom first and we're encouraged to pray for that to be the reality that's experienced on the earth more and more 
that the kingdom would, in that sense, be manifest or invade the earth in increasing measure. Um, so that that's the kingdom. But to understand the kingdom, probably all the activity of the kingdom on the earth, we do have to understand, and, and most of us are aware, there is another kingdom that is at work. And, and, and that Jesus talked about this this kingdom. He talked about the father of lies. He, he talked about he talked about the the. Uh, the kingdom of the powers of the air, the ruler of this dark age, um, and and, he, and and we need to know that that is is a real thing, that the, the powers of darkness, the kingdom of darkness, is a real thing, and in fact, when we come to faith, we're moving out of darkness and into light. That that very action of, of believing in Jesus and Him coming freshly alive in our hearts moves us out of the darkness of the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of God into light Amen. and Jesus yeah, I've got a very a very active audience it's so good that you're all joining in and saying amen at home um, so we have been changed we've been transformed from one kingdom to another but we still live on the earth which is incredibly influenced by the kingdom of darkness but the influence of light the kingdom of God is on the increase and uh, Jesus also helped us to understand this dynamic between these two kingdoms when he said that he'd come to give us life and life abundant, but the, but the devil had come to steal and kill and destroy. So we can immediately start to contrast the two things. We can say that, that God's kingdom, the Father's kingdom, is full of righteousness and peace and joy. Yes, it comes powerfully, but it, it, it's, it's, it's full of blessing. It's something that's yeah. wholesome. Whereas the, whereas the devil's kingdom is something that is destroying that is, and that is killing. And, that, and it's based on lies. He's, he's not telling the truth. So it's, the two things are fundamentally in conflict by their very nature. And it's really fascinating that you read in Matthew 11 verse 12, I'm just extracting the one line there, but it says that from the days of John the Baptist till now, it's talking about Jesus's ministry as it got started, that the kingdom of God had been violently advancing or coming violently, or one translation is breaking forth. And it could sound then that the, the kingdom of God is some violent aggressor against the powers of darkness, that, that, that there's something violent in the kingdom but that doesn't seem to make sense with the idea that the kingdom is a kingdom full of peace and joy because that that doesn't fit in the way that we think about violence so is the kingdom of god violent by nature it's described as powerful it is power it is the power of god uh, and 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 through the exercise of that power demons flee and all the rest of it but understanding it right if we think it's some sort of aggressive violent thing um actually what i think is saying is more that the presence of the kingdom is disruptive in nature because yeah. it's so so contrasting to everything else that's around it yeah. so it's not that it's aggressively confronting it necessarily just the very presence of god his righteousness his peace his joy and his power is an affront it, it yeah. stirs up, it's aggravating to everything else that is contrary to it and everything else that's around it. Um, and so Jesus moved around being who he was, being the son of God, healing the sick, raising the dead. And it was incredibly beautiful and powerful what he did. He was filling people's lives with righteousness, peace and joy. He was telling them the truth, but that was incredibly disruptive to the lies, to the liars, to the those that brought people into bondage and sickness etc so <clears throat> jesus shows up the kingdom of god gets the kingdom of, pardon me the kingdom of darkness gets incredibly riled up it gets it gets shaken out of its status quo so to speak uh, and and you see that even at the birth of jesus here he comes he's, he's just a, a baby and within a few weeks of his birth there's this terrible edict given and all the babies under two-year-old are killed well, what's going on here's the presence of the kingdom the king has arrived and he's vulnerable and yet it is the pure unadulterated heartbeat of god the father's kingdom has come in a baby and it's disruptive already it's been announced by angels it's been announced gloriously 
and suddenly there's a react it's creating a reaction which means there's something horrible and brutal not done by god but done by the enemy who's reacting uh, deceptively and destructively in response to the arrival of the kingdom of god in a pure form on the earth and so this horrendous tragedy takes place instigated by the rulers of the age and so jesus came and he came to take his planet back uh, and i just want to i just want to read you something out of out of hebrews chapter 12 I'm going to read this from the from the Passion Translation. <clears throat> in verse 26, it says, The earth was rocked at the sound of his voice from the mountain. This is talking about Moses, uh, about God's voice on, on the mountain when he gives the, the Ten Commandments to Moses. Uh, but now he has promised, once and for all, I will not only shake the systems of the world, but also the unseen powers in the heavenly realm. Now this phrase once and for all clearly indicates the final removal of things that are shaking that is the old order so only what is unshakable will remain since we are receiving our rights to an unshakable kingdom we should be extremely thankful and offer god the purest worship that delights his heart as we lay down our lives in absolute surrender filled with awe for our god is a holy and devouring fire and I just want to read you some of the there's little commentary notes that that uh, that the author of this puts in the in the margin and about this statement. It says although uh, the, the prophets are talking about like mountains, he thinks they're talking about the world systems of finance, government, military, religious, and the message that the message of the gospel has shaken the shaken the world's foundation as it includes an unshakable kingdom rising in the earth. It's not God's power or throne that's been shaken, but invisible forces of darkness in the heavenly realm. The point is, you could read it and it sounds like God's coming and giving everything a good shake, but actually you could also read it and say, God's coming with his unshakable kingdom and that's making everything shake. And that's the point really that I'm trying to make today. I think. God has been doing some incredible things in the earth in the last 10, 20 years. So many people, if you just take a global perspective, not just our own experience, a global perspective, so many people uh, are coming to faith in all kinds of situations that we don't get to hear about on the, 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 the mainstream media, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. M you know, millions coming to Christ uh, in, in China itself, Tens of thousands come to Christ because he's appearing to them in Iran and on and on. And the amount of, of healings and miracles that have been happening around the globe is incredible. Even in, in my lifetime, the increase of miracles in Western Europe is just absolutely extraordinary. And so in that pure, beautiful, powerful, joyful, righteous form, the kingdom of God is rocking up on the earth and it's creating a reaction not because it's releasing sickness but actually because it's coming and showing up and disrupting and shaking the powers of darkness and i think something of what we're seeing is a massive reaction in that realm in that that spirit realm to the pure and wonderful in, invasion of heaven to earth that has been happening around the globe over the last couple of decades and i expect that have more of heaven is going to be manifest that the thing this disruption and this distress that we're experiencing is a reaction to heaven coming more and more and we're going to see more and more we should expect to see more miracles uh, through and as a result of this because god is on the move he's what he's doing is on the increase uh, and i just want to land this by, by sharing a couple of things that we can do that this scripture encourages us to do since we are receiving a kingdom or the rights of an unshakable kingdom we should be extremely thankful the rightful the writer says and offer god the purest worship that delights his heart as we lay down our lives in absolute surrender filled with awe so so what can we do what's a great response well let's be so grateful that we're receiving this un unshakable kingdom let's be thankful for what we're receiving thankful for what he said thankful for what he's doing and be this is a season for the best worship 
uh, from our hearts, the purest worship from our hearts. And I just want to say something about worship has a massive element of trust and faith inside it. So as we see things around us that great uncertainty, one of our ways of worshipping isn't just by singing our wonderful songs and hymns of praise, which is absolutely what we should be doing right now, but also trust. Trust is worship because it's believing the person that speaks. It's honouring the one who's given the promise. It's giving due honour. Every time I believe Heavenly Father, I'm honouring him. I'm worshipping. So right now, I, I want to encourage us to honour him by believing that he's looking after us, that he is yeah. going to provide for us even in uncertain times, that he's going he's gonna to protect us yeah. even in uncertain times, that he yeah. is the great protector, that he's the great healer yeah. even in times of great sickness. These are the things that he said. And as we trust him in this, no matter how we're feeling or what's going on, that is acceptable worship. It's pure and honourable worship. And I want to encourage you to have that kind of worship in, in your heart in this time. And it, it's, uh, it, it's also a time that we lay down our lives in absolute surrender. Uh, actually, when things are shaking around us, that can make us reach for the control levers. That can make us reach to try and make our lives more secure. But actually what this is saying is now's the time because we have a security in this kingdom that he's given us, in this love that he's given us, in this power that he's given us, we are secure so we can lay our lives down in service to him. So of course we're laying our lives down as sons and daughters. We're, we're priests and kings, but we are also kings that serve. We are queens that serve. We are those who are honourable. So we submit ourselves to the King of Kings and we serve him by serving others around us. So it's a great time to be thinking about how to bless others, how to serve others, even if we find we're in a place of pressure ourselves. So I'm just going to pray for us and, and God is going to bless you. I just believe God is going to use the, the internet. He's going to flow. His presence, his power can flow through the internet just as much as it can flow through hands or, or, or any other medium. He is not limited by the medium. So, Father God, I just want to release fresh faith to every heart that's listening and watching, watching this. Uh, we choose to trade our fear, God. We, you understand that we can get fearful in these times, that, that fear can come upon us. So we just choose to say, Father, will you take our fear and will you give us your faith? Take our fear and give us your faith right now in Jesus' name. Secure our hearts so that we are full of kingdom, righteousness, peace and joy. I just yeah. declare that over you, righteousness, peace and joy in Jesus name and right now I'm gonna I'm gonna touch my phone and if you want to touch your whatever device I'm just believing that there's gonna be a release of peace Amen. in your heart a release of faith in your heart and if you're suffering with sickness I'm just releasing yeah. healing to you in Jesus name in Jesus name be healed be whole be peaceful be full of faith have an amazing week and keep rejoicing that we're receiving this unshakable kingdom. God bless you.